Welcome back to Management 760. As you can see, I'm once again in my backyard veranda. It is a little warm here this afternoon in Northwest Louisiana. It's about five o'clock, uh, but I enjoy it out here. I wanna, if you can see over here, uh, the little red thing, if we're real lucky, we'll see a couple hummingbirds come in and feeding off of that feeder. Those of you that are, or have never seen a, a hummingbird, they are fascinating little creatures. We're going to discuss in this video chapter one of the textbook. It is an extremely basic chapter, but it's a good introductory chapter, especially those of you who don't have undergraduate degrees in business. And uh, what I'm going to do is reference the slide numbers. You'll see it's 1-3, 1-4. I'm just going to say slides three, slide four, that kind of a thing. Uh, the learning objectives are pretty straightforward. And uh, as you can see, the, the first one there is to learn what strategic management is. Uh, at a very, very uh, general inter introductory level that, that'll get us all um, on the same page uh, as we start the course. So if you read the, the learning objectives, and if you go to slide five where we'll take a look, the chapter takes a look at strategy in ancient times and military strategy. It's interesting, none of that'll be on the quizzes by the, or the chapter one quiz, um, but it, it's very interesting to see the history, but uh, in modern times, we really can't translate military strategy into business and corporate strategy, as, you, as you'll see as we, we get uh, and progress through the course. What is strategic management? Well, slide six um, basically says it examines the activities of the CEO and the top management team. Uh, it mentions there's formal tools. It mentions there's creativity. Sure, that's, that's all of that. But what strategic management really is, is a study, I think as I said in the, in the introduction, is how an individual firm can outperform its rivals over a sustained period of time. The field uh, takes a look at the, at the firm as a total enterprise, so not just marketing, not just finance, not just human resources, not just R&D, uh, but the entire firm as an entity. And we'll see that in week 1B, the more advanced lecture coming up in the second half of this week. Uh, chapter seven uh, tries to begin sort of narrowing our focus of defining the field and um, I, I think the five P's are a little corny to be honest with you, but I think it's pretty good. So, so strategy is a plan. We usually refer to that as a strategic plan. Uh, in major new venture startups, we call that as a, we refer to it as a business plan. But uh, a plan is just a, a set of, uh, of, of carefully crafted steps, uh, as we will see. Uh, the next slide, uh, the second P, says strategy is a ploy. It's kind of interesting. They, they kind of defined it as a, as a trick. And, and as we see, and I'll tell you some stories uh, from my consulting days, we can certainly try to trick uh, our rivals or our, our other competitors. But think of ploy as a series of strategic moves just like moves on a chessboard. Those of you who are familiar with the game of chess. Strategy is pattern. Now this is very interesting. And uh, uh, the, the, the notice that define it as the degree of consistency in a firm's strategic actions. And I like that. Uh, what we know for the established firm and by established firm, I mean a firm that's been in business for a while. Gary Hamill did a study in the 90s that said that the average established firm only lasts 40 years before it goes out of existence, either through merger or it fails. Obviously, there's a big variance around that 40 years. But what we know for the established firm, if the top management team changes the strategy frequently, in other words, there's no consistent pattern through time, uh, this can be uh, hazardous to the people in an organization. On the other side, we don't want to stay with the same pattern forever, and that's going to be the role of innovation, uh, as we'll discuss. Uh, the, the next slide, 10, talks about strategy as position. We'll see more about that in detail in 1B. So remember, as a reminder, every week will be 1A, will be the basic lecture, 1B will be the advanced lecture. But think of strategic position as J.C. Penney, for instance. Let's say the retail chain. I think everybody here, we don't have any international students yet, so I think everybody should 
know the name J.C. Penney. They turn out to be positioned very, very closely and very problematically too close to Kohl's. Uh, now, when we think in the same retail space, if you're familiar with the very high retailer, high-end retailer, Neiman Marcus, they're positioned way far away from Walmart. In fact, they're positioned so far away from each other, they're not even considered competitors. So strategy as position is a very, very important concept. Strategy as perspective, uh, they define it as how executives interpret the competitive landscape around them. That's part of it. The way I like to think of perspective as what are what is the CEO and his or her direct reports, we'll define that as the top management team, or later in the slides uh, you'll see TMT, top management team. Uh, I like to refer to it as what are their mental models of the business. And later on I'm going to give you a fascinating example from Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, a mental model can be good and useful or it can be totally biased and unuseful. And Encyclopedia Britannica had a very biased and non-useful mental model that uh, almost drove it to bank bankruptcy and indeed forced it to be sold out to a Swiss financier. So strategist perspective is very important. Uh, slide 12 talks about really uh, the work of a uh, strategy professor in, in Canada by the name of Henry Mintzberg and he was the first to talk about, if you take a look at slides 12 and 13, uh, the, the differences between and among intended strategies, emergent strategies, realized strategies, deliberate strategy, and non-realized strategy. Whew, that's a lot to, lot to consider, isn't it? So uh, let's go back to slide 12. A firm's intended strategy is, is really the strategy in the strategic plan. It's the one that we set out and we hope that we will put into play and execute. Through time, though, things bubble up in the established firm everywhere. There's all kinds of opportunities, and sometimes these things cause a deviation from the intended strategy, and, and we refer to that as the emergent strategies in a firm. The realized strategy is the strategy that actually gets implemented. And by the way, as we'll see in some pretty neat examples coming up, uh, th the realized strategy can be way different than the intended strategy. So the deliberate, on sl uh, slide 13, the deliberate strategy uh, can be parts of the intended strategy that, that continues over time. And then non-realized strategy is stuff we thought would be good, but we have d uh, discarded for some reason. And the next couple slides, slides 14, 15, 16, uh, show some, some interesting examples of what was started as an uh, intended strategy, first of all, in an idea that ended up as Avon, uh, then an idea that ended up as ESPN, and then an idea that ended up in Home Shopping Network. And you can see the movement um, between and among uh, the, the um, in, hold on, I lost my place, the intended strategy, the emergent strategy, and the realized strategy. And in my, uh, 30 years in consulting, this really is the norm. Uh, we, um, and as we'll see to, at the later end of this presentation, strategy in today's world is very dynamic. It, while we want uh, consistency through time, through the pattern, we also have to be open to innovation. Uh, slide 17 kind of depicts all of this in one schematic and I think it's pretty good. If you add, um, those of you who've printed off your, your PowerPoints, if you go down to the bottom of, and, and to the left, put now, you know, let's say today's date, whenever you view this, and, and that would be the intended strategy, and then the realized strategy is sometime in the future. By the way, sometime that future can be two years down the road. In Nestle's Nespresso product, that took 30 years for that product to come from intended strategy to realized strategy. And it went through a lot of changes along the way. Uh, the next couple slides, uh, I may have mentioned in the top of my remarks, will not be on the quiz. It's really uh, m more for your interest. Slides uh, one, uh, 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
24, excuse me, um, 25 uh, are really, really just some ideas of the flow of the thinking about strategy. As you'll see, most of the time it's couched in military strategy. And by the time we get to slide uh, uh, 26, just the comment that I want to make is um, about 20 years ago, there was a group of strategy professors that tried to draw learning and parallels from military strategy to corporate and business strategy. Um, it, none of that has really panned out, and I think you'll see why uh, over, over the course. The point I want to take, though, on the analogy, and this is one of the things I want to impress upon you as students, especially those of you who are younger students, business is indeed like war. Uh, competition is very real, very, very intense. There are periods of time in any industry where competition can seem benign, life can, see, can seem kind of easy, but those are getting to be very rare. Uh, uh, think of the analogy, business is war, and I think you'll be able to have a backdrop as you learn the material through the course. Uh, slide seven, 27 then kind of just shows some milestones in the history of, of, of really management thought, if you will. And uh, again, those are interesting. There won't be anything on the quiz on that. The, the point I want to make in slide 29, by the time we get to 2010, where Walmart becomes the largest competitor in the world, or company in the world, uh, is that strategic management, that set of activities and accountabilities that the top management team is account accountable for, is super important in today's environment. A couple things cause that. One, very fast change. Things are changing very, very quickly. Two, globalization. Now, the, the wor we, when we think of competing, even uh, private family companies here in the Shreveport, Bossier area of Northwest Louisiana are starting to think on a global footprint. And finally, innovation. Innovation is disrupting uh, established firm after established firm. Um, some of you may not even remember the very first search engine was called Ask Jeeves. Jeeves was a butler from a novel that I should know and it was called Ask, Ask Jeeves. And there's a couple companies that disrupted them, and of course we have Google now pretty much disrupting everybody. Uh, the last slide of this chapter, and we'll close out, takes a look at the strategic management process. Uh, pretty straightforward. The key point that I want you to know here is, is that strategic management is a key executive process. We'll define process all the way at the end of the semester when we talk about executing strategy. But we're going to look at strategy as understanding strategy and performance, understanding the environment. Internal scanning is looking at our strengths and weaknesses inside of our firm. We want to formulate that strategy, most of the time published as a strategic plan. And then we want to go out and execute or implement that strategy at world class speed. All of that is a key executive process. Uh, let me leave you with one note. The average lifespan of a CEO in the Fortune 500 publicly traded companies is about four to five years now. It's very difficult to be a CEO and boards are uh, replacing CEOs fairly frequently when they don't think their performance is what they want it to be. So hopefully we've given you a little insight in chapter one in the textbook, very basic introductory set of ideas to kind of get us warmed up. Thank you very much. Cheers.